secret tips and tricks bring snacks <laughs> you will be hungry sometimes you won't get to eat or you'll eat really quickly and Hi guys, I'm Nicola. I'm originally from Czech Republic, but I live in the UK now. I'm currently based in the Midlands. I do wedding photography, I do some cinematography and camera assisting as well. Wedding photography is really important. We are the main photographer for the day. So as you can imagine, weddings are a big deal and you only get one chance at everything. So there are different types of wedding photography. Everybody kind of has a different style. Some people like to have a very documentary feel to their wedding. Some like to stage loads of funny poses or loads of funny group shots. So it really depends. And I think you kind of find that out when you're having your first consultation or your first meeting with the clients. It's always really good to ask them to show you what kind of photos they like. And if they're not sure, just ask them to go on Pinterest and just uh, browse or go on your website and have a look because it won't make sense if they're after a really specific kind of photography that doesn't actually suit your style. So it's always best for them, direct them to your website and see if they like your style and if not, then you can work something out together. But there's also really stylized photography. There's all, there's all kinds. <laughs> It's expensive, but it's expensive for a reason. Um, I think people don't realize that wedding photographers spend about like four weeks, give and take, to actually go through all the photos, to edit all the photos. So you're not just paying for that one day, you're paying for all the editing, all the packaging. If you want a wedding album or prints, you're paying for the memory, insurance, there's so much. <laughs> all the equipment, all those things aren't cheap. Oh, preparation is so important. I wouldn't say like skip it at all. I think if you're new into wedding photography, um, or if you even if you've just been doing it for a year or two, I'd say always, always prepare. Sometimes even do some practice takes with your camera. Uh, maybe even some practice editing or something, but definitely pre prepare and make sure that you have enough memory, enough batteries, um, you have chargers with you, everything, because weddings are not something you can stop at and say, okay, sorry, can we repeat this moment? You have to have everything clean, everything ready to go that you can just quickly swap out in the moment. I would definitely say to have a list with you. I remember when I started assisting, my the photographer on the in the of the morning of the job would always hand me a print out, and we would go over it um, in the morning in the car. But that was so helpful because you you just remind yourself of the the couple and who the like best man, who the maid of honor are, because they're going to be your key um, people to contact if you can't. You know, if the bride is busy, you don't always wanna. Uh, be too intense and asking them about all the logistics. Then you have all the timings, which is important. As a photographer, you're actually constantly with the couple and your, your job is also to make sure that things don't overrun and you don't push things too much. Sometimes, and most of the time, things do kind of overrun, but um, you then have to quickly rethink your your, the timings you have for your photos. So I always say to the couple, like, it's good to have maybe 30 minutes minimum just with them two. And I always say, sometimes it's actually nice for them to have a breather from the busyness of the wedding and actually enjoy being married. And those little moments are great. So as a photographer, you can guide the couple through that as well. 
I would definitely have your own Pinterest board or mood board or however is best for you. Sometimes I have screenshots on my phone of the shots I know they really like so I'm, I don't forget. And sometimes you're shooting with a couple and your brain might go blank <laughs> and you're like, you're like, oh, I, I can't think of any more things to do. So I sometimes quickly refer back to my mood board and think oh yeah we haven't done this type of shot or oh i forgot to do the details of the rings or something like that so it's definitely like really beneficial to have things like that prepared and with you printouts are great you can cross things out sometimes i ask my assistant to cross them out so that um they can also be like your backup and remind you of what you need to do next the day consists of so many details so to create the, a perfect memory you kind of need to have a list of things that you know you should cover and this might be something that the couple might give you beforehand so obviously the perfect memories would be um, all the candid photos all the staged photos capturing the day from start to finish but there's so many little details that the couple puts so many like so much thought into and that's the invitations the shoes that the bride is wearing or the rings all those little details sometimes you can kind of forget about or think oh they're not important i'll just move on but it's always good to get them because they capture the 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 yeah the special kind of day and you know every couple really thinks into like the decorations and color schemes and things like that so there's a lot of tiny little elements to make your wedding but yeah i think those are important so location that's an interesting one because i would always advise um when the couple is looking for where to get ready for example if they're getting ready at like a certain venue or a hotel room or something uh, and if they can choose i'd always say can have a look at if there's windows um, because you want natural light sometimes you can get really cramped hotel rooms so sometimes you can say oh why don't you get something bigger and that way people will have more space to move around all those little things are actually really um, helpful for the photography and for them um, if you have loads of natural light you can always position them in next to the window or do all your detail shots around those places and then also if you're outside, a lot of wedding photographers would arrive to the venue a bit earlier or do loads of research and actually do a walkthrough just to see what the gardens are like, if it's nice to take pictures there, um, take pictures of the venues, the locations. Again, all those little details would be really important to the couple. Um, so yeah, I think look at space, look at lighting, scout out your locations. If you have an assistant with you, they can probably do that for you. So then you're prepared for the day and if the couple was to go outside you kind of know where to take them already when it comes to lighting that's another really really important aspect to really think about i would never go and do a wedding without having a flash to go on my camera some photographers might even bring extra little led panels or some kind of lighting so that if you're doing shots outside into the evening you have those extra lights to give you more more light but i would say venues tend to be quite dark sometimes and so you definitely will need a flash for those sometimes it can have really high ceilings so you always need to be prepared for those moments i would never say shoot a wedding without a flash that's really risky for example once i did a wedding and they wanted to have sparklers and go outside and do the sparklers and I didn't have, at the time, I didn't have any LEDs with me or any of those kind of extra lights. But we had our flashes on our cameras and we had big reflectors. And the location was that when they had all the guests come outside into like a big uh, kind of space, there was nothing. It was pitch black. It was really, really dark. So what we did is we just let our flashes reflect onto the reflectors and that way the light was on the people but um, again it's, this is one something you prepare for in advance and you can really think on the on the day and with you and your assistant you can just do that quickly but I definitely always bring extra lighting because you'll never know when you need it so with camera settings is definitely something 
that differs to every camera and every person. I'm not gonna give you like settings and say use this because that works because it's gonna be different wherever you are, if you're outside, inside, what cameras you have, what lenses, are they fast, are they slow? Um, so again, this comes back to preparation. I would say always test your gear beforehand so you really, really get to learn it. I remember when I started wedding photography, I started as an assistant in weddings and I was given the camera and I had to quickly learn it in the car on the way and I remember messing up a little bit, I wasn't quick on changing the exposures. Um, so then I just asked for the camera to practice at home and that like made the whole difference. So definitely practice your gear, know how to quickly adapt to when you're quickly going outside, going back in. You always need to master your manual settings, don't, don't um, rely on auto. <laughs> Uh, definitely really really learn how to do those things well. You'll also notice that when you come back to the editing room how change your settings impacts your editing. Some people like to underexpose just a bit um, and that helps them with their edits or the other way around. There are loads of different type of lenses that you'll always notice wedding photographers carry around. Some photographers actually have two cameras with them one with like let's say an 85 mil prime lens and one with maybe a zoom lens you'll just notice the difference between both sometimes i carry my prime lenses but i always put on the zoom first because the zoom lens is so much quicker you you can shoot something far away and you don't need to quickly run to be close and then i never really use my prime lenses only if i actually have time to swap them because it's all about timing you don't really have the time to think oh maybe this will be a good 50 mil or you know you have to kind of do it quickly um if you have two photographers so if you're the main and you have a second photographer it's good to give them a different kind of lens to yours so that gives you more of a variety in shots so if you're a beginner and you're wanting to try out wedding photography i would suggest to start with a good kit lens which usually is like a zoom like 18 to 60 mil or something and i would everyone would tell you to get the nifty 50 the 50 mil prime it's a great lens i actually personally really like the 35 mil but i guess it depends on on you and what you like so those two things are great to start with get a probably a good camera i would always say like mid-range to the large uh, sensors are really good um, I was shooting with a Nikon D750 and I've always really liked the camera. It has a flip out screen and it's it, it always depends on you. Some people prefer build of maybe the Canons or some people prefer the Nikon but I wouldn't let that stop you um, shoot on what you can because <laughs> it's always best to practice and then once you get more confident you can upgrade to something better. When it comes to editing and the post, I always, 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 always back up at least twice. And if you can, maybe back up online or somewhere so that if one hard drive fails, you know you have another copy. Because, you know, I won't be able to sleep until I back up. And it would be the worst thing for you to go through the whole day and then lose your footage. Like even thinking your body is making me nervous. <laughs> so definitely back up and definitely back up twice on two separate hard drives or one on a hard drive and one online. Um, sometimes I keep the photos on my SD card until I really need to format the SD card just in case. You can also lock your SD card so after you finish your job you can lock it and put them away in a safe place before you get home. So that would be the first thing because it's so important. And then when it comes to editing, I usually put everything straight into Lightroom and go through and edit only the ones I want to edit. And then that way you can kind of filter through and take away the rest. And then I go through the edit again and just uh, finalize everything but it takes all of that takes a long time I go through that so many times and edit and edit and edit down until I've got the happy 500 600 images or so that I want to give to the client 
And then what I do, and everyone does this differently, and that's totally fine, do it the way it works for you. Um, I have a part of my website where I upload everything and it's a private page where the clients can see all of it, like a gallery, and then download what they want. And then I send them a physical memory card for them to have. But yeah, everybody does it differently. And I love that every photographer finds their own way of personalizing how to give the finished product to the client. And as someone who grew up married myself, um, I definitely love what the experience that it brings when you get like a box or a package and some chocolate and it's, yeah, it's really sweet. And that can be a really fun, fun thing to do. For wedding photography, I definitely find inspiration from photographers that are like years ahead of me. You know, you can, you look at their work and you think, oh wow, like how did they do that? Or how did they manage that short? Or how did they, you know, edit something like that? And then it can always inspire you and think, oh, you know, I want to try this or try that. I definitely say just photography in general, like, you know, you don't, it doesn't need to be just wedding photography. It can be like, modern art or you know like you might see something and think oh yeah this this is the lighting here is beautiful or you know i want to shoot in nature more and yeah or if you looking at street photography um i love weddings that are so stylized are so um like docu like street photography style as well so all those little things um inspire me and come together <laughs> Sometimes breaking the rules can be quite fun, but I definitely say um, master the rules before you can break them. And I think for me, I would say it would be in playing with your, like how to expose an image. So sometimes if you have a really bright day, obviously the white dress would just reflect. So sometimes I like to shoot a bit faster and then only get like some details and everything be dark or little things like that you can do that then creates a really creative artistic image but I think it's those little things you you learn as you go and then you learn how to break the rules to get a certain effect in your image. Secret tips and tricks bring snacks <laughs> you will be hungry sometimes you won't get to eat or you'll eat really quickly and um Always ask your couple beforehand whether they've prepared a seat for you to sit. Um, the, their budget might not always allow it and that's totally fine. So make sure you know if you can get food at the bar or if you know you might have to bring your own snacks. Always depends on what kind of wedding and where it is. Um, bring snacks, bring snacks, loads of water for your assistant as well. Sometimes people put their snacks in the car so that when they're driving around um, yeah, I'd say that was my biggest tip. <laughs> if you're starting as a wedding photographer, sometimes it might be tricky to figure out what to wear. <laughs> so I would say do look very presentable. I wouldn't say don't wear jeans, but you might not want to wear a skirt because it's uncomfortable. You can't, you know, uh, get lower for shots. Or So make sure you wear really comfortable things, but do look smart, um, especially with your shoes, wear comfortable shoes. Um, and sometimes have like backup. So if you if you get really cold, you, you can have something or have an umbrella with you um, or like a rain jacket and things like that. So that's also a good tip to have. I think to become a successful wedding photographer, I think I mentioned this before, you definitely need to have a huge passion for the industry and, you know, be a really great people person. Because like I said before, it's such an intense day and you're there to guide the couple through the day and you know, you're with them all the time. So you really need to have a lot of patience, have a little grace for that as well. And it's not for everybody. So it's quite, and it's a really intense day. It's a long day. Um, so you really, really need to enjoy it to be successful at it. Because, you know, if, if people have had a great experience with you, they're going to be the ones recommending you to their friends. And that's how you can really build your clientele. But if you don't enjoy it and you've not really had a great experience, then you might not be recommended. So I think to be successful at it, you definitely need to enjoy it. You definitely need to be very organized, make sure you have the right gear and 
you're also good at editing <laughs> but again all of these things come with experience so I think practice 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 um, if you have friends who just got engaged offer to shoot for them you know just make it your gift <laughs> I definitely done that a lot um, or if you have friends that are couples just just do some shooting with them and you know do it in different timings of the day uh, go out in the morning then go out uh, at the golden hour and really see the differences in that and then keep editing your work ask for loads of feedback so that um, you know you learn how to adapt to that too and how to keep upgrading your work basically thanks so much for having me guys you can check out my wedding photography in the photography section of my website and my instagram is la underscore nick um, so yeah have a great day enjoy all the wedding photography adventures and i'll see you next time <laughs>